Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to Willy the Emperor 25 Man Normal in the Mogushan Vault. Yes, this fight, I would probably say it's quite disappointing, in my own opinion. Yeah. So thanks it's... for watching. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. It's a bit of an anticlimax considering it is the last boss, and the rest of the instance I think is quite decent. So, but, yeah. But yeah, the last encounter is a little bit boring, but nevertheless, we have to kill it. Yep, to get to the other instances. So, first off, what you want to do, you want to bring two tanks, uh, five to six healers, and a mix of DPS. multi dotters are really, really strong in this. But, however, you do want two DPS with tanking abilities. So, like a, a Rep Paladin, a Warrior, or anything anything with a Taunt or like Retribution or whatever. Stuff like that. Um, and we'll explain that in a little while. Now, the fight consists of two different bosses. However, before we talk about them, we're going to talk about the three types of adds that are also in this encounter. And the encounter in itself, in essence, is all about just killing these adds. Yeah. So to start off, we're going to talk about the first ad, which is the Emperor's Rage. Now, four of these ads will spawn at a time, and they'll fixate on a random player. And these ads can be CC'd to high heaven. You oh, can yeah. stun them, you can root them, you, you can sheep, sheep them. them everything. You, literally everything works on them. So yeah, basically you just want to kill these ads are really, really fucking simple. They haven't got much health, but one tactic that you might want to have is have a, a couple of Frost Death Knights where they spawn, and um, you can have them mass grip them, and they just pull straight in, and it just makes AoE in them so much uh, quicker. You can have uh, three ones, uh, three Frost Death Knights if you have that available, is probably the most ideal things, but to be honest, you, you don't even need any. You could just CC them as they come towards you and just kill them, really. But they're the second priority that you want to be killing. Now the next ad we're going to talk about is the one that you want to be killing every time they spawn, you want to be killing these first. These are most important, they're highest up on DPS priority, which is the Emperor's Courage. Uh, and two of these will spawn at a, at a time, um, and these will fixate on the tank that's standing furthest away from them. Now these ads don't do any damage to the raid or anything like that, but they will be carrying a shield which prevents you from deal dealing damage to them if you're standing in front of them. So to kill them you need to go behind them. Now these ads can actually be slowed, which is important, because once these adds reach the tank it will slow the tank's movement speed as well as dealing some damage to them by 25% and it will eventually stack to 100% which yeah. means the tanks can't move at all. Which is very important later in the fight, the tanks are always moving in this fight so if these reach your tank it's really not a good thing, you need to get the Hand of Freedoms out and stuff like that so you just got to make sure you kill these real quick. And one thing to note about these adds, when they do actually spawn the shield isn't up on them immediately so if you know where they're going to spawn and you're actually looking at the sides of the room, you can dot them up, like, straight away. So you can dot them up and then move behind them. Now, the last ads we're going to talk about is the Emperor's Strength. And now these are the lowest priority on your DPS, really, but they still do need to die, of course. Um, now, these ads do something very, very simple. They do something called Energizing Smash, which is a big AoE on the ground. You've got a couple of uh, seconds to move out of it. You move out of it by running through it. But if you do get hit by it, it's a two-second stun. It does 150k damage, which isn't good. However, every time they do an AoE, the next AoE is going to grow by one yard. And this gets bigger and bigger. So eventually, they do need to die. Now, you want your two DPS tanks to take these because literally they'll do practically no damage to your tanks, uh, your DPS tanks. As long as your DPS tanks can hold threat off the multi dotters, you shouldn't really need to put any more DPSs on this and just kill them and then that's it. And the best way of avoiding the smash as the melee tank, if you want to call it a melee tank, is literally just run through them when they cast the big circle. Thing. Yeah. Simple as that. So there's the three ads. We're now going to talk about the bosses. Now the Yay. bosses themselves actually spawn after 90 seconds. So you'll you have to deal with 90 seconds worth of ads and then the bosses will spawn. Um, you want uh, a tank to pick up each one, so one tank on one, one tank on the other. Um, and you want to sort of take them towards the position shown on screen now. Now, the bosses have two abilities, the first of which we're going to talk about is Magnetic Armor, and this is just a debuff that is applied onto the tanks every 10 seconds, um, which it, it basically prevents the tanks from moving more than 16 yards away from the boss. If you move away more than 16 yards, you just get gripped straight back in. Now, you need to be wary of this because of the next move, which is called Devastating Combo. Now, this is a series of five spells which consists of two different types of spells. Now, the first type of spell is Devastating Arc. Now, this is just a big cleave on an area either to the left or the right or in front of the the boss this is a 25 yard cone area in front of the boss which it's like a, it's like 180 degrees so it's a big big area however there is like a big animation for you like beforehand so you've got to move out of it otherwise it does 200k damage to you and reduces your armor by 10 percent and this can stack up to 
Um, 100% less armor, so you'll get fucked real now, the, hard. The way to see exactly where the arc is going is that you'll see, and the it, you, you have to judge it from the animation of the boss. Yep. So, for example, if the boss has lifted his sword above his right-hand shoulder, then the arc is going to be on the left-hand side. And if he lifts the sword above his left-hand shoulder, then it's going to be on the right-hand side. If the, sword, the boss lifts the sword directly above his head, then it's going to be directly in front of him. And you need to dodge it according to that. And this is also indicated by lines on the ground. Yeah, which it's helps like out. some little dashes that yeah. fly about. You'll see them. Just move from it. And the other one is Stomp. Now, this is very similar. However, it is a 12 yard AoE underneath the boss. And um, so basically, you've got to move 12 yards away from the boss. But if you go too far, you'll be gripped back in. And if you do get gripped back in and you do take this um, Stomp, it does 150k damage and stuns you for two seconds. Now, if you get stunned at the beginning of a devastating combo. Yeah, 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 you're going to be fucked. You're going to be a little bit screwed, because obviously the armor reduction as well is quite deadly, as well as the huge amount of damage you're taking. If you do manage to avoid all of the five different spells in, in the combination, then you'll get an extra action button, and this is called Opportunistic Strike. Yes. Basically, this is a um, move that once you activate it, it does 500k physical damage, um, to your target, of course, enemy target you can't just snipe your healers or whatever, which would be good. They should add that, but it's not in yet. Um, <laughs> so what you want to do, you want to be using these on the boss. However, as melee DPS, if you have uh, switched over to the Courages, you may also want to use it on them if they're getting towards the uh, tanks too quickly. However, just use it on the boss otherwise. Now, they're all the mechanics of the fight. Now, this is practically how you need to position. Now, the range DPS want to be stacked up in the middle, multi-dotting all the adds to high health. Seriously, if you are a dotter in this fight, it's just like tab dot tab dot all you do is just dot the shit out of them of course making sure that you when a courage does spawn that you do get into the right position so you can kill them now you might want to assign a certain amount of people per courage um, to make sure that both of them die because of course if they add the slow to the tank so it won't be able to move from the devastating combo equals death so that's bad now the majority of your melee dps will be on the bosses and the courages now um, there's a certain way that you can um, move your melee dps around to maximize their dps um, for example, if the the courage spawns on the left hand side, the DPS hitting the left hand side boss will want to follow it over as it runs towards the right hand side tank and DPS it. And then once it dies, they'll already be right next to the right hand side boss, so they can just start DPSing that and vice versa. So you can get your melee DPS to switch each time a courage spawns. Now, of course, you also have your two DPS tanks, we're going to be calling, tanking them the strengths on the side, and that's their only job in this fight. Now, if they do have a free second, like their ads did suddenly die because they got, like, bursted down by something or other, um, they can go and uh, help with the courages, or they might want to go DPS the boss, or they might want to go DPS the rages or something, but otherwise, they just want to be making sure that they're there for when the Emperor's spawn so they can tank them, because if, they, like, if that runs into the range group, you're going to get fucked quite hard. Now, also, as I did say before, you can have the couple of death knights over by where the rage is spawned now this just really does help out with your cc on these ads yeah you really. can you, i mean gripping them all together makes it so much easier for chain lightning and any small small cone aoe or anything like that it just makes them die a lot lot quicker so if you can bring death knights to do it then it's great but it's not essential no definitely not essential it's just a nice little luxury so on top of all the ads and all the things that you need to do with the ads and the things that you need to do with the bosses there's one more mechanic that's in play in this encounter and it's called titan gas um, and this will appear every now and then and it lasts around 20 seconds and all it will do is fill up the room with gas and during the time that this gas is up the ads will stop spawning now while this gas is active you will be taking constant ticking damage and the bosses and the players will deal 25% more physical damage so the bosses will be hitting harder but so will your melee but obviously your tanks are going to take a beating because they're taking ticking damage and more damage from the bosses and the bosses themselves hit pretty fucking hard as it is um, so during this phase the best way to do it is just pop tank cooldowns um, and yeah you want to use personal cooldowns use health stones stuff like that make whatever you can do just to stay alive and also make sure the range is stacked up and make sure you're in range of healers and stuff like that because yeah and try and finish off as many of the little ads as you possibly can so those melee can like can get healed up nice and quickly so I haven't got the ads to deal with especially the melee tanks so providing that you can kill ads and kite ads and move from cleave, you can practically do the fight. It's such a letdown if you ask me. Yeah, However, I think it's a bit of a shit I have fight. seen it on a heroic and it looks scary as shit. So looking forward to doing that guide for you guys. So thanks a lot for watching. If this guide did help you out, then please do give us a thumbs up. It really does help us out. And make sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. And if you'd like to see more 25-man raid guides by Fatboss, please do click upon the annotations you see on your screen now. Lovely.